well, Sunday is fast approaching. How's the training camp been for this fight? It's been good. It's been long. So we've had a, a long time to prepare and improve on everything that we think I should have been doing well. Back down to welterweight, which I personally believe is the, your division for now. Um, how are you feeling in terms of making weights and being back there again? I'm feeling strong. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to get down to welterweight. Um, I feel stronger, faster, and yeah, I'm more confident in welterweight. Traveling down to the Eastern Cape for the first time in your career, how does it feel? Because obviously it's going to be different. You're not at home anymore. It's going to be a hostile crowd. Yeah, I, I feel it's personally better for me because when you're at a home crowd, you feel more um, responsible to impress everybody. There, I don't know anybody there, so I feel relaxed. You're just going to do you? Just going to do me. You, the, the, your opponent's had three professional fights. I think we, we, we discussed that the other day about yeah. him. Two wins, one loss. Have you, have you found anything on him? Have you, like, what's, 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 what's the research you like? I didn't find a lot on him. I couldn't find fights or anything, but it doesn't really matter in boxing. He can last one round or ten rounds. <laughs> I prepared for ten. So it is a 10-round fight, ABU, I think it's the, the, the Southern District's title. Yes. Title fights, how are you feeling about this? I'm feeling excited, eh? <laughs> yes. First yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, because obviously our first title for you will be, what, your eighth fight? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, eighth fight, yeah. Eighth fight, getting a title already, I mean, that's a big step in your, in your career. Yeah, it's a, it's a boost, a bump, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of winning, what's the, do you guys, have, do you have a plan now? Do you win the title, do you come back home, do you defend it, what's... Was it yes, short term? Uh, no, it's a long term. Uh, we got the title. It's my title. <laughs> it's already your title. Yeah, yeah, just have to go fetch it. Uh, then we come back. Then it's uh, August 23rd. Okay. Yes, Empress. Yeah. And defending. And then, yeah, further, I can't talk much about that, but yeah. So that's a de it's definitely a defense, not just a regular yeah, defense? Yeah, no, it's a defense. Okay, so there is a plan here, and obviously now we're discussing weight divisions a bit earlier. It's going to be a welterweight for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think or the junior middleweights are glad I'm gone, <laughs> but it's welterweights now. I just want to quickly go back to that fight against Etienne. Uh, obviously, you, I did a post-fight interview with you straight after the fight, but I think that sometimes straight after the fight, it's difficult to put your thoughts together. Now, in, in, in having that fight, how, you, how did you feel? Because uh, obviously, building into that fight, it was a difficult. It was a difficult fight. Etienne's a good boxer. So. I was under impressed. Okay. I expected a lot more from Etienne, to be honest. So the first round, I came in hard because I expected him to be good, and then he fell on the. He got knocked down, and then my coach told me to take a little bit easy because we wanted four rounds. So I didn't give him a lot, a hundred percent of me, because he didn't deserve much of it. I forgot to mention in the post fight interview, you, you obviously had a catch. It wasn't even a. It was, it was a, a middleweight, fight. actually. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a strange one, and it was and it got changed to what, six rounds and six four. rounds, then four, then back to six. Yeah. Again. So the bit of a, it was a bit of a circus going on there. Yeah. Um, how did you feel going into that? Do you think there was a lot of? Did it matter to you? I'm not a person that really gets bothered by things, so I just prepare for six, eight. It doesn't matter. Uh, I just mentally prepare for a fight, a good fight, so, yeah. I was talking to your brother in an interview that I'm going to release a bit, uh, probably next week, and uh, he, was, he, he actually said that, that he looked up to you. Yeah. You know, um, having someone looking up to you, do you feel extra, not, not pressure, but maybe some pride? How do you feel? It gives me motivation to become better for them as well. So it's not just for me. Yeah, because obviously yeah. your brother, and you speak highly of him too. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the, uh, my favorite people in the world. My brother, yes, he, he's going to be a brilliant boxer. He is already, but in the professional rankings. Do you, are you nervous for his first fight? I'm nervous for the guy he's fighting. Oh, really? <laughs> I think you guys don't understand how, what quick hands he's got, hey? Yo. So he's, so he, like, like yourself as well, legit. Yeah, he's legit. Doesn't have the power that I do, but he kills people with uh, speed and uh, the number of punches he throws. He throws like four, or five hundred punches around. Yeah. It's just too much for people. Even in the essays, people just gave up in the first round. They just didn't want to fight anymore. It's very rare that you get someone at amateurs that actually remains undefeated. 
yeah, he's do undefeated. You, yeah. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, though? Because I mean, no, sometimes he learns more from a win than a loss. Really? Yeah. yeah. He, usually they say at amateurs, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's like you win and you learn. You some don't people, lose. like Caden, like uh, Floyd and Caden, they both they they strive to to win a fight. They can't see themselves losing. I mean. Obviously, you took a professional loss. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, Second which, fight. Which you said that was, you know, you, you thought you could have continued that day. We've spoken yeah, about yeah. it previously. How did that, did that change anything in your, did you learn from it or did not necessarily? Yeah, I learned a lot from it. I learned that uh, any time I underrated the boxer because I was training with a good trainer and things. I didn't take it seriously. Because I was like, uh, I just turned 18 and yeah. You know, obviously now you've changed weight division. So I, I thought it was going to be at Super Welterweight. So I was going to ask you about some of the other local matchups, but that's going to have to be put aside for now. Yeah. And obviously when you're working with a company like Golden Gloves, they're building everyone's career in certain ways. So it's hard to match their own boys against each other. But, um, you know, fights in the future, like Aiden Quinn, you know, he's coming up. I'm, I know you guys have sparred before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I think he's going to go to middleweight or something, isn't it? Because his last fight was no, middleweight. See, they, no, because there was a three-week uh, training camp, so they decided they couldn't make the weights. Oh, okay. Yeah, so guys like him, obviously, Rourke and yourself are on two different parts. Um, yeah. Yeah, that weight division's kind of like, it was like the in division where you were, but now you've gone to welterweight and become like, now you've got your own sort of part, your own, you're the guy there now. Yeah, so now i got more attention on me in that weight. How do you feel? Because obviously there's a lot of youngsters now, like Golden Gloves took a new approach. They've, they've gone with a whole bunch of guys that they have have potential like Keaton Gomes I yeah, can, yeah I can list them all like Rowan Campbell you know, and there's a few boxing's getting better in South Africa I think it took a dip now it's coming up yeah I feel the buzz in the last three yeah. to four years it's I think starting it's to really, get busy yeah like we're getting legitimate world champions and whatnot how do you feel who's your first of all before we even get who's your who's your boxing hero my boxing hero all time is Lennox Lewis Lennox Lewis Lennox Lewis why it's just the way he fought. He was so uh, professional about everything he did. He outside of the ring, inside of the ring. And he just, when he lost, he came back and he came back hard. He beat everybody he's supposed to beat. And he always won when it mattered. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think all heavyweights eventually get clipped by someone yeah. that they shouldn't have but been beaten by. My new favorite boxer is uh, Canelo. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's my, yes. It's not a bad one to have. Between yeah. him and Golovkin, I mean, between, I don't know, you have to pick one or the other, eh? Yeah. That's very difficult. <laughs> what's your, you're going down to the Eastern Cape, as we said, what's yes. your prediction for the fight? I predict second round TK will knock out. I truly do. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> Are you prepared to get booed and whatnot? It doesn't really bother me. Doesn't so it? if they boo me, it's just, they feel, uh, when they boo you, it f just means that they intimidate it. Correct. Yeah. It's so I like it. I like that, that feeling of uh, the underdog. Absolutely. And with the time yeah. at stake, there's nothing, there's nothing to, to be too afraid of. You've got your own achievements yeah. and own accomplishments. Yeah. Uh, lastly, just a shout out to people that are going to come in. Well, just watch your a achievements. shout out to all the fans and uh, supporters that, have keep, uh, that are by my side. My uh, coach, my dad, my mother, and my sponsor, uh, Robbie uh, McForklift. Uh, just thanks for being there. Thanks, guys.